Good morning! Magandang umaga po. We are going to talk about something, something that applies to almost everyone in the Philippines. Whether you're a citizen of the Philippines, uh, an expat who's retiring in the Philippines, and uh, it applies to almost everybody. Everybody's asking me this question. Do I have to fa file tax in the uh, United States? What is my obligation to file a tax return? How do I get tax on my income in the Philippines? Very common question. Anybody who goes to the Philippines is still has some sort of income, whether it's pension, social security, or whatnot. That's what we're going to talk about. Hopefully you'll be interested in this, but it's a little long, so get a cup of coffee and stay with me. Hang loose. Okay, one of the most common questions being asked by expats or uh, dual citizens in the Philippines uh, is whether or not they are required to file taxes and whether interest uh, they earn is taxable in the U.S., uh, uh, whether investment in stocks are taxable in the U.S. We're not going to talk about Philippine tax now. We're just going to limit it to the discussion to U.S. taxes. So if you are a dual citizen or a United States citizen living in the Philippines, whether you are on an SRRV visa or whatnot, you may be subject to U.S. taxation. Whether you will need to file a tax return or not, that's another question. And if you have any withholding, how do you get that withholding back? Okay, uh, so uh, we're, I'm going to present this in a PowerPoint presentation because it's a little bit complicated, very elaborate. I, uh, I, I did a research on this and I have a, a three-page sum summary and this is just a summary, okay? And it's so difficult to understand, so what I had to do is to put it in chart form so you could very e easily follow it. And I tried to write it in layman's language, uh, non-technical, so that you can follow through it. Okay, so here goes. The United States classifies the people in the U.S. in two categories. One is you are a U.S. citizen, or two, you are an alien, meaning not a U.S. citizen. Let's talk about U.S. citizen. U.S. citizen is either residing inside the U.S. or residing outside the U.S. This is like the expats in foreign countries. Those residing in the U.S gets tax on their worldwide income, worldwide. Those residing outside the U.S. also gets taxed on their worldwide income, okay? Whether you live in the U.S. or not, you get tax on your worldwide income. Now, the alien is classified further into two, a resident alien or a non-resident alien. A resident alien either has green card, or even if you don't have green, green card, uh, there's what they call a substantial presence test. If you have been in the United States for a, an entire year, January to December, you're classified for tax purposes as a resident alien. Now, non-resident aliens, on the other hand, are those not meeting one or two above, meaning no green card, and they don't stay in the U.S. for the whole year. So you're basically a non-resident alien. Now, resident aliens are also taxed on worldwide income, just like a U.S. citizen. So as you can see here, whether you are U.S. citizen residing in the U.S., residing outside the U.S., or a resident alien, you get taxed the same way. No difference. Non-resident aliens, however, are taxed only on U.S. sourced income. So if you have income overseas in other countries and you're non-resident here, you will only get taxed on your U.S. income. The rest are free. Now, when you get taxed on uh, U.S. source income, they have two classifications of income. 
One is called the effectively connected income that is earned in the U.S. Earned means we'll talk further about that. Passive income, on the other hand, are those, those uh, income that are like interest, dividend, rent, and royalty, meaning there is not much uh, physical or personal attention or activity in generating that income. Now, the effectively connected income or so-called earned income gets taxed at the same graduated rate as citizens. So all here are all based on graduated rate. What that means is uh, they they include all your income from interest, dividend, salary, etc., and then the total gets taxed at graduated rate. But then on a passive income for non-residents, passive income that is coming from the U.S., it gets taxed at a flat 30% rate. Unless, of course, there is a tax treaty uh, that specifies a lower rate. So, as you can see, for the most part, U.S. citizens living inside, outside, resident aliens gets taxed here. And even non-residents for effectively connected income gets taxed at the graduated rate, okay, just like here. But the, dip, the main difference is that non-resident non aliens only get taxed on U.S. source income. Everybody else is worldwide income. So it seems complicated, and it is. I had to uh, decipher this uh, law, tax law, and put it in a chart form to make it easy to understand. But that is the basic difference. Now, very important. As a U.S. citizen or green card holder, you are legally required to file a U.S. tax return each year, whether or not you already pay taxes in your residence country. Okay, so let's say you are a U.S. citizen or an alien with a green card or called a resident alien. Uh, if you paid tax, let's say in the Philippines, you will be required to pay, file a U.S. tax return and then take credit. Okay, meaning take a deduction, not from your income, but from your tax liability to the United States for the taxes you earn overseas, I mean, you pay overseas. Now, what that means is there is no duplication of taxation, but you will have to pay the higher of the two. Let's say your tax liability in the U.S. is $10,000, okay? Uh, then you take into account the tax you pay in the Philippines or any place overseas. And let's say you paid 11000 That means you don't pay any tax in the U.S. Although you're required to file a return, you take the credit and there is no liability. But let's say that you only paid 9000 overseas or in the Philippines and your liability in the U.S. is 10000 You will deduct the 9000 from the ten, and you will have to pay another $1,000. It's not a duplication. It's the higher tax in the U.S., relative to the other country. Of course, tax in the other country could be higher, in which case there is no liability either, okay? But you are legally required to file a U.S. tax return each year. And am I required to file a tax return? Now, take a look at the link in the comment section below, and uh, you can determine if you will be required to file a tax return. Uh, the general rule is this. If there is a withholding in the U.S., and you think you're not subject to tax, you have to file a return so that you can get a refund of the withholding. And if your income is small, uh, basically just like a social security as an individual or as a joint return filer, uh, most likely you will not be required to, to, uh, to uh, file a return. But uh, to be sure, uh, go through the link section below, uh, in the comment section below, and check and see your status to see if you are required to file a tax return. Now, I've heard comment from people about, oh, gee, you don't have to pay because there is foreign earned income in exclusion, uh, but that can only be two things. We will talk about foreign earned income exclusion, and the other thing is you can only claim that if uh, you file your tax return timely, okay? If not, it's probably an automatic fail. You can even uh, lose that benefit of uh, foreign earned income exclusion. So now let's talk about what is foreign earned income exclusion. Okay, a U.S. citizen or resident alien of a United States living abroad are taxed on your worldwide income. 
However, if you qualify, you may exclude your foreign earnings from income up to an amount that is adjusted annually for inflation. And in 2020, it's 100,000, uh, 107,600. Wow, that is great. You mean I can exclude that? So I, so it's not subject to tax? Well, let's, let's go through it. To qualify, to claim the benefit of foreign earned income exclusion, you must have foreign earned income. And we will talk about what is foreign earned income. Your tax home must be a foreign country, and we'll talk about tax home, and you must be one of the following. A U.S. citizen who is a bona fide resident of a foreign country for an uninterrupted period that includes an entire year. A U.S. resident alien who is a citizen of a country with which the United States has income tax treaty in effect and who is bona fide resident of a foreign country for an uninterrupted period of time that includes an entire year. A U.S. citizen or U.S. resident, here it's a U.S. citizen, here's U.S. resident, but this one is either who is physically present in foreign country for at least 330 full days, that's 11 months, during any period of 12 consecutive months. If you live uh, uh, outside the U.S. for 11 months out of 12 months, then uh, you, you meet the criteria, okay? Now, what is earned income? Well, earned income is, is a pay for personal services performed such as wages, salaries, or professional fees. So, if you're not retired, you're continuing to work, it should be wages, salaries, professional fees. Now, social security benefits, pensions, interest, dividends, capital gains, etc., are not earned income. Business profits, so if you have your own business, or you're not employed, uh, it's, a, it's, it's called a, a variable income category that may either be earned income or unearned income or partly in both. And the reason for that is uh, many business owners run the business and they also receive their own salary in that business. The salary piece is earned income and the, the remainder, which becomes the business profit after, they pay, uh, after you pay yourself a salary, is not earned income. Okay. Uh, so, if you are an absentee owner, you own a business, but you have somebody manage it, you just periodically go there, how are things going, blah, 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 you're an absentee owner, you don't, you're not re receiving any, any uh, salary, and therefore, the, uh, the uh, entire profit just comes to you at the end of the year, uh, th those are unearned income. So, it's best for you to make yourself an employee of that company and receive a salary. Now... What's a tax home? Your tax home is the place where you are permanently or indefinitely work as an employee or self-employed individual. If you do not have a regular place of business because of the nature of your work, your tax home may be the place where you regularly live. Or if you have neither a regular place of business nor a place where you regularly live, you are considered an itinerant and your tax home is where you work, all right? Uh, for, for most people, this will be a very easy thing to classify for some other people. This may be a little bit difficult. Now, let's talk about the uh, tax treaty with the Philippines regarding non-resident aliens. Uh, you're either self-employed or independent contractor, or you are an employee. Now, if you are self-employed and you have no fixed location, either you have no fixed location or you have a fixed location. Fixed location is like a store or a storefront, whereas the, if you have no fixed location, is let's say you are an independent consult consultant and you go on from one place to another, but you don't have a regular office. If you have no fixed location, you are exempt from U.S. income tax if in the U.S. for no more than 89 days, and your earned gross income is no more than 10,000. If you have a fixed location, you're taxed only on the income from the fixed base 
uh, item number two, which talks about the uh, not more than 10,000, will not apply if you have a fixed location. Now, employees, exempt from U.S. income tax if in the United States for more than 89 days, just like here, uh, an employee of a permanent establishment maintained in the Philippines and your income is not paid by a permanent establishment in the United States. So, for example, if you're working for McDonald's and they send you to the States, uh, you, you, your pay better come from the Philippines for it to be exempt. But if, it, if the pay comes from the U.S., McDonald's, then it will get taxed. Employee, again, for employees, the pay received an employee performed as a member of the ship or an aircraft operated in international traffic by Philippine resident is exempt from U.S. tax. And thirdly, exemptions don't apply to income of the Philippine resident received for performing services in United States as an entertainer such as theater, motion picture, radio, television, artist, musical, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if it's more than $100, $100 or 3000 which is not that great, most likely you will exceed that if you, in fact, are an entertainer. Regardless of these limits, income from Philippine entertainers is exempt if your visit is substantially sponsored by the Philippine government or are certified as qualified or exemption by the Philippine authority. Now, this whole chart here, in all likelihood, is not going to apply to you. So it's not that important. But the previous charts, they are important. Most likely, they will apply to you. This is an important notice regarding Philippine law. Under the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program of 1997, incomes earned abroad by Filipinos from 1998 onward are no longer taxable. Hence, all Filipinos abroad, including those who have reacquired their Philippine citizenship, have been exempted by the Philippine government from paying Philippine income tax on incomes earned abroad. Income earned in the Philippines, however, will be subject to Philippine income tax. There you have it. Uh, it's a very complex subject matter, but you could very easily uh, follow it through because uh, a lot of it probably will not apply to you, but at least from the presentation, you can, you can tell which one applies to you and whether you should be filing a return or not. Uh, for most people, you will be required to file. Oh, by the way, do not forget about uh, FATCA and uh, FBAR. Uh, those are reporting of people who have bank accounts in the Philippines. You are required to, uh, FATCA is, uh, is uh, more, uh, not when I, I should not say more intense, but it applies to most people. Uh, FBAR, it has a higher threshold of, uh, account balance before you are required to, to, to file that report. So you have to have those two. And FATCA is part of the uh, Form 1040 that you are filing, the federal tax return that you are filing. Okay, so your disclosure on FATCA is in that form. That is if you have a foreign bank account. Now, uh, as a bonus, I was going to talk to you a little bit about whether or not you are entitled to your social security benefit. Okay, so let me just read through this. I did not prepare a chart because this is easy. In general, if you have qualified for social security by working and paying into the program for 40 quarters, so first thing you have to uh, determine and see if you qualify, then you will be eligible to collect benefits as an expatriate and retire in a foreign country all right keep in mind though that there are a variety of factors which would render you ineligible to receive benefits so it's important to perform due diligence and get the facts which are specific to your individual situation an example of this is bilateral agreement between two countries if you are a citizen of one of the countries listed down below, okay, I will attach a link, okay, and attach, I mean, I will put a link down below. Uh, and if you reside in the Philippines, yet not as a citizen of the U.S., then you are in a, uh, your eligibility for future benefit will depend on various factors. A simple screening tool will check for how long you will remain eligible to receive the benefits using the link listed in the comment below, as I said, all right? Uh, so just click through that and follow through the questions and it will determine whether you're qualified to receive social security or not and for how long, okay? So I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, presentation today and uh, please do click like, I'll appreciate that. 
and send it to other people who you think might benefit from this. As I said, this will apply to most people and please do subscribe. I will really, uh, that will really help my channel. Thank you so much and make it a great day.